Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Esper Midrange. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Here at It Resolves, we love to test new decks, have some fun, and hopefully learn a little something along the way. If that sounds like your cup of tea, please make sure that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you enjoy the video. If you don't, it's totally okay, I understand, but if you do, it really would help out a lot if you subscribe, like the video, all that jazz. But let's talk about today's deck, guys. This looks like a really fun one. So. Only played one game with this, let me be clear. Uh, I have only played one game. It is an Esper Rafine style deck. However, there is a lot, and I'm telling you a lot of tech in this deck. So we are going to be learning a little bit as we go because truthfully, I have not been able to explore all the, the nuances and the subtleties of this list quite yet, uh, but I'm excited to try it out with you guys. So let's talk about it a little bit. Let's, let's see what we can do and let's see what we can figure out too because there are some things that again, I'm just not so sure of. Uh, now, to be clear, this was taken from MTG Melee. This was a list that was played in a tournament. The only change I made was actually to the sideboard, which was to add a second uh, Wandering Emperor. The only reason I did that was because I didn't have the Shieldred card. It was like a fourth Shieldred. I just didn't have it uh, and didn't have the wild card for it. So I threw the Wandering Emperor in there as just a placeholder. Uh, do keep in mind, if you go to the link down below, it will be slightly different, but the, the main deck is very similar, if not the exact same. Uh, and so as far as this list goes, there's a lot of usual suspects. Like I said, Rafine is in here, of course. Uh, Shieldred is in here, of course, because again, this is such a powerful card. We saw this do a lot of work yesterday, as well as that Earth Eye Resurrected. If you didn't watch yesterday, yesterday's game please go watch yesterday's game it was so good uh we do have the wandering emperor and then sitting at the top we have ao a very very good card for this list because if if you'll notice basically we've got tons of permanents down here uh and ao can hit almost all of them if not all of them with that uh, ability so very very powerful and then of course just distributing a couple one one counters can sometimes win you the game as well uh like i said the wandering emperor is there gix is in here uh which i'm really excited about because i really like gix the ability to draw extra cards if you would like is just so powerful uh and then you can discard X cards, exile the top X cards of your deck. You can play lands and cast spells from among them without paying their mana cost. So uh, if, if you have all that mana and nothing to do with it, this gives you an out, right? Which is really cool. Uh, Adeline is in here, uh, along with Thalia. Because we've got the four Thalias, that's part of why you really see an overabundance of just creatures, right? Uh, we don't really want to be casting non-creature spells if we don't have to. However, we do have Destroy Evil and then, like I said, uh, the Wandering Emperor earlier on. Uh, we do have uh, Lauren of the Third Path, a new card uh, fr from the Brothers War, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it's a 2-1 for 3 with Vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. So there in itself is our uh, creature version of artifact and enchantment hate, which is nice. And then you can also tap it and you and target opponent each draw a card, which again, if we have Shieldred out on the battlefield, is a very imbalanced, less symmetric effect than it initially might seem uh, and so there is some benefit to throwing that out there and then being able to shield it uh, for a little extra value uh, evangel of synthesis kind of an interesting card it helps us loot through our deck a little bit and then takes advantage of any time we do draw an extra card so definitely again helping with that lord of the third path and giving us a little bit more of a buff than the opponent might be getting off of it uh, Denek, a bit of a usual, usual suspect here, giving our, uh, our locking down graveyard, excuse me, and then of course being able to, to disturb it back out is always good. Uh, Jadar is here, kind of an interesting one, um, but basically it's just going to be spitting out creatures every turn, so it's really just a value card as far as I can tell. Uh, Malevolent Hermit, again, just a nice little counter spell on a stick, and then of course on the flip side, non-creature spells you control can't be countered. Not very relevant, but if it would be put into the graveyard, again, you exile it. It's just really a flyer. Um, Giada is in here, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm really not sure why it's in here. Um, I, I haven't been able to figure that piece out. I'm just going to be honest. I, I don't really know why Giada's in the deck. Uh, it's a flying vigilance threat, so I guess that's good. Uh, maybe that's just enough. 
We'll see. Uh, and then Ashnod, Flesh Mechanist, is also in here. It's a 1-1 Death Toucher. When it attacks, you may sacrifice another creature if you do create a tapped Power Stone token. I think that works quite well with Jadar, actually. Uh, and then you can tap 5, exile a creature card from your graveyard, and create a tapped 3-3 Colorless Zombie Artifact Creature token. So, uh, there's some long-term value with Ashnod here as well. One thing that you'll notice is we have a lot, I'm talking a lot of lands, 28 actually, uh, which is a ton, but we do have a lot of Aganjos, a lot of Ottawaras, uh, we do have an Abandoned Mire, and we do have some that are like sacrificial lands, and that, you know, Plaza of Heroes is theoretically there to give Hexproof an Indestructible, Rafine's Tower we can cycle, and then of course these we want to channel out for the most part, and they get significantly cheaper because if you'll notice, we've got a lot of legendary creatures. Uh, so, there's some interesting stuff that we'll, we'll probably get to in that capacity as we go through, but guys, this is going to be an interesting one. I'm very, very curious to see how this goes. Let's have some fun today. Let's hopefully win some games. I'm, I'm hoping for another game like yesterday's. That was just an absolutely stunning game, but let's jump into game one, guys. Let's see how we do. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. A bit of an interesting hand, but I will try it. Uh, my anticipation is that Giada is just going to die pretty quickly or get bounced really quickly, perhaps. Um, I'm actually going to lead with the Shipwreck Marsh because we don't have a turn one play. We can just throw a, 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 a planes out there for the Giada on turn two. Uh, but we do have the Rafine, which I like quite a bit, right? Like Rafine in itself is very, very solid. Uh, and this actually does trade with the Delver. Uh, which is kind of nice. Ooh. Uh, hmm. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, yeah, I think we just have to go Thalia. Thalia is so solid against a deck like this. It just taxes basically all of what they're doing, um, which against this kind of deck is very important. Um, we are going to take a hit to do this, which kind of sucks, but uh, I do think that's probably just a reasonable play. Um, and they did not hit a land. That's actually really crucial for us to uh, keep in mind here. Um, I think we just go Rafine. Uh, they most likely won't have a good solid counter to this just because they can't. Um, <laughs> we've locked down a lot of their mana, which is great. Um, I'm going to discard a Giada. Uh, to throw an extra counter there and get a little bit of an extra hit in. Uh, I'm kind of glad we threw that Thalia out there from the standpoint of, wow, they are just going to go all out to make sure that they can get a hit in here, which does make sense. I'm not going to block it, actually. Um, I'm going to let that come through because we should be able to uh, Rafine into, or, or hold up Rafine next turn, which might be better. Uh, or attack in. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, cool. Um, they're throwing green in there. I'm wondering if that's just for, like, the safekeepings and, you know, those kinds of plays. That's fair. Very good. Alright, so let's see. Uh, this seems pretty good to shut down their draws, right? Uh, so we can just do that to shut down the combat research, which doesn't seem like a bad play, in my opinion. Um, yeah, let's do it. Uh, let's go ahead and blow up that combat research. It's just going to shut down the draws, right? And that's kind of the most important thing. Uh, we do have to keep in mind we don't just want to die here. <laughs> um, so, do we just leave up the Rafine? Or do we go for the connive on it to be able to block next turn? I think we just leave it up. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I feel like that's a bit of a sketchy one. Um, I think we might need both of these, so unfortunately I'm just going to get rid of a, a planes here. Deal three. Obviously no sense in leaving up the ground uh, attackers in this scenario, right? Like, there's really not a big reason to. Um, so I feel like it's worth it to just kind of push through as much as we can now to hopefully make it easier to win in the long run. Um, okay. Uh, so they can exile a card from the graveyard. That just means they get to play that if they would like. Um, yeah, I think we just block here. I think that's perfectly fine. Um, okay. That's super good. Uh, that is going to kill the Rafines, so fantastic on their part. Um, it's not the end of the world, though, thankfully. So that's fine. Uh, let's throw you out there. 
let's throw you out there. All right. Um, gonna attack like this. Uh, we're gonna throw the counters hopefully here. Uh, we'll discard you and you. So we'll get one. Um, that's not enough to save it if they were to block, but it looks like they're not planning to, which is fine by me. All right. Um, so we could draw if we wanted to. I don't think we want to. Um, I, if we do, it's at the end of their turn, right? Like, that's not something we want to do now. Um, and they might be able to just win it, and it looks like they probably are, uh, because they can just steal... Uh, we'll, we'll see. They can... We have a blocker. Ah. Uh, okay. Yep. That'll probably do it. <laughs> Uh, good game on the opponent's end. Having Massive Might is very, very solid. That was a great, great addition. Uh, yep, I'm gonna go ahead and concede. It's unfortunate, but that was a really, I mean, honestly a solid game played by the opponent. I don't think we could have really done anything differently. Uh, I think we played reasonably well, so let's jump into game two. What's up guys, just a quick break from the video to remind you that through the end of December we will have our new proxy pack available via our Patreon rewards and select tiers. In celebration of Phyrexia All Will Be One coming early next year, we have the amazing Original Praetors as our Patreon rewards this month. Now, those include my all-time favorite card Elish Norn with Jenga Taxis, Shieldred, and Vorinclex. Again, if you're interested in picking these up, guys, we really would appreciate the support, and it's a great way to pick up these awesome proxies every single month. You can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. Without further ado, though, let's jump right back into the video. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. This looks like a phenomenal hand, actually. Uh, between Thalia, Adeline, and Shieldred, and apparently we are up against Mono Red, so this should be interesting. Um, very curious to see how this goes, actually, because... This slows down their burn, or it at least taxes their initial burn. Uh, but as soon as they get Adeline down, it might be a little tricky for them to really get very far. Uh, that's an annoying card for sure. But uh, we also just have, again, to keep in mind, we do just have the Thalia, uh, or excuse me, the uh, Shieldred, which is going to be difficult for them to burn out just in general and um, will gain us some life back if we can get there. So we do have all the mana we need to get there, which is helpful. So they are gonna just go ahead and kill the Thalia. Makes sense. Yep. Uh, don't love that I have to do this, but I am gonna do it. We're just gonna go ahead and throw the Adeline out there, taking a damage. Um, thankfully, they don't really have too many cards left. I'm a little worried about what they could have. Obviously, they attack with everything. There's no reason not to, um, but we really want to get more stuff down. Oh, that's so good. That's very, very good. Um, doesn't matter what we block here, I guess. Yep. Okay. Uh, is that worth... Hmm. So that's two, five. All right, so first things first. Let's attack in. Uh, because that gives us a free spell, or a free creature, excuse me. Do we throw this out, gain the life? I think this is probably the safest play. Uh, I hate that we have to take a damage to do this, but... We have to get that Devastator out of there, I think. Um, and now we can at the very least kill something, so if they do just all out attack, we've got ways of killing stuff. Um, is that enough to kill us, though? They've got haste on all of this, so yeah, I think they can kill us. Man, that sucks. They just had a killer hand. Look how aggressive this got. Um, I mean, that's amazing. Like, well done, opponent. You know what I mean? I can't be mad. All right. Uh, yeah, we just die. I can't be mad at that. They just had so many aggressive pieces. Like, that was really, really solid. We maybe could have played a little differently, like Shieldred, maybe. But I, I think that was honestly just the best bet. I think we would have lost either way. So I'm not all that upset about that one either. Let's try and jump into game three. All right, guys, let's see if we can get a win this time around. Uh, I don't think we can keep this, um, unfortunately. I would love to, but we can't play most of the cards in the hand. I will keep this. Uh, what do we throw back? I think it's probably just the plaza for now. As much as I want that, uh, the reality is we can't really do too much with it um, for a while. Uh, and so I think that's actually the, the best option to just throw back. Cool. Uh, that's actually great um 
I think we actually just go Denic, right? Because it blocks the Thalia efficiently. Um, and we assume at the very least that they're not going to have too many uh, removal spells or anything like that. Maybe they do, but they are going to tax themselves to play it. And so for us, I think this actually makes the most sense just to be able to block and hopefully, you know, ah, Brutal Cathar. Fair enough. That'll do it. Uh, yeah, that's great. Um, interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I was going to save this, but I feel like Adeline is probably the right play. So let's run that out there. Brutal Cathar is one of the cards that we don't run in the deck, which is actually pretty interesting. Um, because I do think, man, they just, why is everybody just having the perfect draws? What is this? Um, because Brutal Cathar is so good, like, it's a reasonable card to throw in here, and I would definitely suggest, um, looking at that as an option. Alright, please don't have another Brutal Cathar. That would be really annoying. They're gonna have another Brutal Cathar. I set it up. Every time. I set it up. They're gonna draw it. They're gonna either have it, or they're gonna draw it, and they're just gonna run it out on the shield. Or... No, but that's terrifying. Um, okay. Although they don't really have a solid attack either, so that's helpful. Uh, let's... Jadar. Um, I'll throw you out there, and I think I'll just cycle this. Uh, it gives us an extra card, honestly, and some life. I'm not going to attack, for obvious reasons. Um, and assuming a stalemate, like, the long-term value here is enough that we could potentially get somewhere with it um that's all fine they can attack with my rel wow they're attacking with everything seriously uh i mean we have to block here right uh we have death touch they can't do too much there yeah i think we just block there kill the big thing hope for the best <laughs> Uh, yeah. We'll throw you out there. This isn't really gonna end well, right? Like, okay, so we do get to blow up one of their things. That's helpful. We'll throw you out there. We'll cycle this, but I'm pretty sure we just lose. So we're up to 12. This does basically nothing. <laughs> uh, man, we are just getting wrecked today. These aggressive decks are rough to to fight with like a mid-rangey deck like this so i guess that makes sense but oh man yeah so they just all out attack and they win this feels terrible i feel like we were a turn away from stabilizing against the mono red deck i feel like in this scenario obviously not so much um <laughs> which is fine right like it is what it is um we just would block like this i suppose yeah, ugh, this feels terrible, guys. Uh, we we'll give it one more. I think we've got we've got room for another game. Um, this obviously, yeah. If we had first strike on something, we might be able to save ourselves because we could have killed the valiant uh, veteran first. Um, all right, what what are you doing here? You you can just win it. It's fine. Yeah, they, they just kill us. Oh, that feels so bad. We were... So, hmm. I'm annoyed. I'm so annoyed. All right. That's okay, guys. Let's jump into one final game. Let's see if we can get a win. All right, guys. Here we are for our last game. I have to assume we might be able to get a win. I have to assume. Uh, I will say, again, this is such a like one-of heavy deck and built for traditional standards, so I know I'm hedging a little bit here, but truthfully in saying that, all I mean by that is that you're going to run into things like this where you just aren't set up very well for best of one, and I think this is a prime example. I really do. Um, it's okay. I mean, it happens, but it was still worth trying. We learned a lot. Uh, at least I did, and I, I think it's it's an interesting build to say the least. Uh, I am curious what they actually discard here. Denic, I think, is like a reasonable option, but Shieldred is a lot scarier. Gix is good. All of it's good. We keep drawing all of our tapped lands, which is less than ideal. <laughs> uh, I am going to go for getting the Denic on the field, right? Because it, we know they have discard now. I think I'd rather make sure that we've got something kind of 
propelling us a little bit more forward. I'm really glad we picked that up, actually. Uh, just from the standpoint of uh, it gives us a little bit more pressure. It slows them down in terms of, oh no. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, sorry about that. I don't know what the heck happened, but uh, we unfortunately, uh, they can't Wandering Emperor, right? So we're gonna shield it, I think, this turn. Uh, sorry about that. The, uh, the Every once in a while, the client will crash on me. Uh, and so unfortunately, that's what happened. Uh, it's fine, it is what it is, but just annoying. Just very, very annoying. All right, so we're getting a little bit of damage in. We're gonna go ahead and throw that Shieldred out there. Um, they can Wandering Emperor the next turn if they have a land, but that's gonna be two cards out of their four card hand, which is good to know. Okay, they're gonna go for the throw. That's, that's annoying, but fine. Um, and next turn we just have Rafine to start powering out a lot more stuff. And it looks like they don't have a land, which is solid. Um, very, very solid. All right, let's go ahead and throw out the Rafine. One thing we do have to keep in mind is we have to uh, make the call on what gets the connive um, tokens prior to them blocking, which is a little annoying, right? But I think it's fine. We'll get rid of the two Thalias because I think at this point we're just pushing through as much as we can. Um, and it gets it out of range of really them doing too much. Uh, and now, between the ward cost and the Thalia tax, like, we're in a relatively good shape. Wow, they're just gonna... <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I don't think this works, though, right? Unless they have a removal spell. I was gonna say, I don't think that... I don't think that works. Uh, yeah, we got a win! It was a weird, janky win, but we got a win! Uh, guys, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, everybody, Esper mid-range with a lot, I'm talking a lot of different one-of tech and things like that. I question some of the includes in this deck. I don't know that the Giada makes a lot of sense at all. Uh, I do think there's a lot of little mini kind of engine combo-y pieces, which are really cool if you can get them all down. I think that's really tricky and best of one because you don't A, have enough time most of the time to really get a lot of that stuff going. Uh, and B, of course, you just run into a lot of removal and things like that because it's kind of point and shoot removal or sweepers a lot of the time uh, and so for me I do think there's some finagling with this list and getting it closer to the best of one version of Esper Rafine but I wanted to try something different I'm kind of tired of seeing the same decks over and over again and so part of the uh, the the model of picking or picking decks that are built for traditional standard and then throwing them on the best of one ladder is because it's a little bit different and I'm, I'm just tired of seeing the same decks I know a lot of you guys probably feel the same way some of you guys might not like that i'm playing best of you know three decks on a, a best of one ladder and i totally understand but at least it's something different uh and i'm gonna try and continue to do that as we move forward because i want to see different decks i want to get different ideas and i think you guys have some ideas as well that you probably would like to see played so if you do have any leave a link in the comment section below send me a link on discord stokes uh i know you sent me a deck list i have not looked at it yet so i'm calling you out specifically because I know you sent me one uh, so I will look at that later today for hopefully tomorrow and guys thank you all so much for watching I really do appreciate it if you enjoyed this even though we lost most of the games please leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're not already it really would help out a lot we would really really appreciate it so guys thank you all again for watching I love you all very much have a fantastic Thursday I'll see you again very soon